Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and today I want to take a look at section 3.3. Uh, this is the rules of differentiation, and, and this is really, in my opinion, uh, the first section where, where we really get into uh, the way we're going to be solving derivatives throughout the entire rest of calculus. <coughs> so first, let's take a look at some of the theorems in this section. We're going to talk a little bit about them, and then we're going to do some examples that are going to pull from one or more of these. Uh, so the first one is the constant rule, and that basically just says if we take the derivative of, of a constant, um, let's say 3 or pi or e or 17, whatever it is, the derivative of that is just 0. Uh, the next is the power rule. This is probably going to be the most used rule in this entire class, and, and maybe some of your uh, subsequent um calculus classes and differential equations please if you know nothing else in this class make sure you know this and this says that if we're taking the derivative of a variable to some power n where n is a positive integer the derivative of that is you pull the n out front as a product and then you subtract the exponent by one and we're going to be looking at uh, plenty of examples, or at least you'll see plenty of examples in the homework and the book involving the power rule. Uh, the next is the constant multiple rule. That's just if you have a constant times a function, uh, what we can do is we can pull the constant out and just take the derivative of that function. And we'll be looking at that as well. Uh, the sum rule says that if we take the derivative of a sum or a difference, that we can take the derivative of those um, functions individually. So, uh, and then add those together or subtract them together depending on whether we have a sum or difference. And then the last one is the derivative of e to the x, which happens to be the only function that serves as its own derivative for every point in its domain. Um, and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Uh, and we'll see other examples of that as well. All right, so first let's go ahead and pull up an example and see what we get. All right, uh, this is actually number 26 in the exercises, and it says uh, f of v is equal to v to the 100th power plus e to the v plus 10. And we're going to be using uh, almost all of these rules in this one, except maybe the uh, constant multiple rule. Uh, but go ahead, um, give it a try, see how far you can get, and then we'll go through the solution. So pause now, and then unpause when you're ready to go through the solution. All right, um, so the derivative of this, without going through that super lengthy uh, um, limit definition, is going to be equal to, well, the first thing that we can do is we can take the derivative of each one of these separately. So we're going to do, uh, and this is just derivative notation. That means we're taking the derivative with respect to v of v raised to the 100th. Plus, remember, we're separating it, and that's due to the sum rule down here. So we're also going to be taking the derivative with respect to v of e to the v plus the same thing, v of 10. All right, so this is now three derivatives, but we definitely have the rules to solve this here. So this is going to be equal to, well, v to the 100, that's going to be using the power rule. So we take the 100, we put it up front, we keep that variable, and then we subtract one from that exponent. So that's 100. Uh, v to the 99 plus the derivative of e to the v with respect to v is just e to the v e to the v and finally the derivative of a constant from up here is equal to zero so uh, there's not much cleaning up to do but this is just going to be 100 v to the 99 plus e to the v, e to the v. All right, 
All right, uh, the next one we're going to be taking a look at is this function here. Uh, this is also from the exercises. This is number, ooh, I'm not even sure which one that is. I think it's 34. And it says f of t is equal to 6 times the square root of t minus 4t cubed plus 9. So go ahead, um, give that a try, see how far you can get, and then we will go over the solution. All right, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is whenever I have uh, a root with a variable, I'm going to rewrite that in exponent notation. Uh, it's going to make it a little bit easier. So I'm just going to still keep this as f to the t. I'm not taking the derivative yet, um, but that's going to be equal to 6. And we can change the square root of t to t to the 1 half. If you need a refresher on that, just let me know and then minus 4t cubed plus 9, plus 9. All right. Now, uh, I showed you step by step how to do that sum rule before where we separate them into different derivatives. But uh, once you get used to doing it, um, we're going to keep doing that, but we're going to kind of skip that step of doing the separation. Instead, we're just going to take the derivative of each individual term here and then keep the operator in the middle. So uh, now we have f prime of t is equal to, we're going to bring the 1 half out front, so 1 half parentheses times 6 t to the negative 1 half minus, and that's going to be, uh, remember, we can actually use the constant multiple rule to pull the 4 out, so we're just taking the uh, derivative of t cubed, which is 3t squared, and then multiplying that by our constant from here. So that's going to be uh, 4 times the 3 from the exponent, t, and then 3 minus 1 is 2, like that. And then we're going to get plus 0. And here we're using the constant rule to take the derivative of 9. So now to clean this up, um, this is going to be uh, 6. Uh, we can put that t to the negative 1 half on the bottom and make it t to the 1 half. So that'll be 6 over 2, which is 3. So that would be 3 over and then square root of t down here. Uh, so go ahead and make sure you feel comfortable reducing that down. Um, so that's going to be 6 over 2, which is 3. And then the t to the negative 1 half goes underneath to make it positive, And then we convert it back to the square root. And then this is going to be minus 12t squared. And uh, yeah, and that is it for this one. Um, let me just double check that, make sure that all looks right. 3, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at another one. All right, so uh, here's the next one. So this is f of x is equal to 3 e to the x plus 5x plus 5. So go ahead and give that a try uh, using these rules, and then uh, we'll take a look at it. All right, uh, so this is actually a pretty easy one here. So uh, f prime of x, that's the derivative of x, is equal to... So for 3e e to the x, we're going to be using the derivative of e to the x, and we're also going to be using the constant multiple rule here. So we'll pull the 3 out. We'll take the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x, and then we'll put the 3 back in. So this is just going to be 3e e to the x. The derivative of 5x, um, so let's take a look at that one off to the side. That's really just 5 x to the first power, right? So if we were taking the derivative of that, just like before, we take the 1, we bring it out front, and then we would take 1 minus 1, which is 0, and x to the 0 is just 0, and uh, 1 times 5 is 5. So that's going to tell us that for any time we have a variable to the first power here, then we're just going to end up getting the coefficient out front. So for 5x, it would be 5. If it was negative 4x, it would be negative 4, and so on. 
and then the derivative of a constant plus 5 is just 0. So this is our final answer for that one. All right, let's take a look at one more before we move on. All right, so last one here is 2x plus 1 uh, times 3x squared plus 2. Uh, now try that one, uh, see how far you can get, and then we will do that together. Okay, so uh, here, um, this is actually, we could look at this as one function times another. And if we had learned the product rule, we could apply the product rule. But unfortunately, we're not going to learn the product rule until next section. So for now, the only real way to do this is just to FOIL this out. So uh, this is going to be equal to, let's see, uh, my pen working right. So f of x is equal to, so the first ones, that's going to be 6 x cubed, 6 x cubed. The middle one is 3x squared, so plus 3x squared. Uh, the outer ones is plus 4x, plus 4x. And then finally, the last is plus 2. And now we can take the derivative um, using our rules. So I'm going to use the sum rule to separate all four of these terms out. And then I'm going to use the constant multiple rule to pull all the constants out the front. And then the power rule to take the power of all the variables here. So this is just going to become uh, 3 times 6 is 18. So 18x squared plus, uh, we pull the 2 out front. So that's going to be plus 6x to the first. And then remember, we said if we have a variable to the first power, we just take the coefficient plus 4, and then that zeroes out and you're done. So here is the derivative of that one. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on. All right, so the last thing that I really want to take a look at is how to compute higher order derivatives. So uh, you may have, you may want to find the derivative twice, in which case you'd write a double notation. And all you're really doing there is just taking the first derivative and then taking the second derivative after that. So let's let's take a look at an example. So let's say I have some function here that is 3x cubed plus 9x. Right? And I want to find f double prime. So what is f double prime? Well, first I would find f single prime. And that's just using my rules. That's going to be 9x squared plus 9. And then to find f double prime, the second order derivative, uh, we just take the derivative again. So that's just equal to 18x. And this would be your answer right there. All right, guys. Uh, I hope this helped. If you have any questions, please let me know either through the forums or through email. And I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Thanks.